deck screener. I'm going to give you guys a tutorial here on this channel. What we do is I show you guys how to filter through all of these new coins that are listed on these decentralized exchanges and all these various blockchains so that we can find the next 1000x meme coin, the next Pepe token. For those of you who don't know, Pepe was the last token that went 1000x. And that's what I show people how to do in this channel, how to filter through all of the coins so that you can find the next gem, okay? So to get started, the way I do that is I leverage various tools. I'm on Dex Screener right here at DexScreener.com. And what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you the top four filters that I use to look for these gems, right? And I'm gonna show you why I use them, when I use them, and I'm gonna show you how that you can make your own filter here on Dex Screener. Now, first things first, what I do is I go to the new pairs tab so that I can have this age column right here. A lot of you guys get lost on the gainers and losers tab. There's no age column here, right? So you need to be on the new pairs tab in order to have the age column. A lot of people run into that. Now, in order to set your filters, they have two buttons down here. They have the rank and filter, and then they have the time frame, right? So I'm going to go to rank and filter it brings up all of these fields that I can populate. And what these fields do is they filter out the coins that show on this table here, right? And for example, in this case, with the current filters, it's only going to show coins that have liquidity greater than in this case, $10,000 in liquidity. But also, it's only going to show coins that are younger than 24 hours old, because I filled out the field here for the maximum pair age as 24 hours. And I can change the these fields to filter out different coins to show on this table here, right? And so that's what I'm going to show you in this video, what my best filters are and why I use them. Now, first things first, I recommend filtering to only show coins that are listed on the Ethereum network and even more specifically on Uniswap, okay? That's because all of the moonshots are on Uniswap on the Ethereum network. They just basically aren't listed other places. So if you wanna find the next 1000X play, the next Pepe-like token, then you're gonna be trading on Uniswap on the Ethereum network. And that's the end of story. I'm just gonna tell you like it is. I'm not gonna convince you that you can somehow find the next Pepe on some random chain. No, I'm not gonna make content on Binance Smart Chain. I'm sorry. I don't consider myself an Ethereum maximalist, but however, I wanna teach people how to have the highest possibility of hitting the actual next 1000X meme coin, and that's not gonna happen on other networks. So just shooting you straight there. I'm sorry if that hurts. But now that you're on this page here, they have these filters and I bookmarked these filters because what the filters do is they populate the URL up here with these fields, right? So basically what I can do is I can bookmark my filters after I create them, which makes it very easy, right? So I can just go to my bookmarks and I can go to some of the ones that I'm used to using. Now, this first one, this first bookmark was called, what was it? One hour old new pairs, okay? Now, to show you what filters exist for this setting, what it's showing is it's showing all of the coins ranked by pair age in ascending order, only showing coins that have liquidity greater than $100, which is super degen, by the way. And also it's only showing coins with a market cap or fully diluted value less than $500,000 so that I can find new coins, right? So these settings, liquidity greater than $100, fully diluted value market cap less than $500,000 gives me very new coins, super risky coins. In fact, I also have the setting to only show coins that are younger than an hour just to keep the page clean because all of these filters, I want the page to be as clean as possible to show as few coins as possible so that I have less noise. And by cutting out the noise, I increase my chances of finding those gems by just using these filters. And so some of the last filters that I use here are just to kind of cut out some of that noise. I say that it needs to have at least one transaction in the last 24 hours. And sometimes I'd make that transaction be a buy transaction. And when I hit apply, it gives me a nice concise list of only 16 coins that I can look at. And I know that they're at least you know, younger than a, in an hour old, right? At most, I mean, and then that they're, they're young, they're less than $500,000 in market cap. So none of these are going to be too high in market cap. They're all going to be pretty early, right? But the problem is with these coins 
is they're very risky. And so I have it sorted by age to get as early as possible. But I want to tell you something about this age column that a lot of people don't really tell you about because they just don't even know. This age column, when it says two minutes here, it doesn't mean that the chart is two minutes old, right? Let's say it says 53 minutes. It doesn't mean the coin has been trading for 53 minutes. What it means is the token contract was created 53 minutes ago, right? So there's a big difference between the contract creation and when the token is actually tradable on the decentralized exchange. Those are two different things. And unfortunately, this age tab misleads a lot of people because people incorrectly think that it's telling you how old the chart is, how long it's been trading, but that's not <laughs> what it does. It just tells you when the token was created. So Basically, as an example, this might be 54 minutes old in terms of how long ago the token contract was created. However, if I click onto the chart, it might show me a chart that's way younger than 53 minutes old. It might show me a chart that's only four minutes old, that's only 10 minutes old because the chart in the trading opened after, significantly after the token contract was created, right? So that's a, a thing to consider. And when I'm using these filters and I'm filtering by pair age, what I tell people is it's not a rule, but it's a tip that if somebody opens trading as soon as they create the contract, they're somewhat in a rush. Maybe they're a serial launcher. They've launched 100 coins. So it's no big deal for them to create the token contract address, add liquidity to Uniswap and open trading all within the span of minutes. Because when a coin shows up here, it means it started trading. And when a coin shows up here and it has three minutes next to it, it means that within a span of three minutes, somebody created a token contract address and then listed it to be tradable on the decentralized exchange. If it happened that fast, fast how much care did the person take when they were listing the coin? If somebody took a little bit more care, then maybe they took some time to like verify the contract, get the website information up, get the Twitter up and running, open the telegram and things like that. And if they've made more preparations, maybe there's a higher likelihood that it's not a scam. Meaning that these newer coins that show up on this list with younger age, perhaps younger than now, are perhaps more risky than coins that show up later, right? So that's word to the wise, but that doesn't mean that all of these coins are scams just because within the span of an hour they've opened trading from the time that they created the token. Doesn't mean it's a scam necessarily. So consider this my new pairs tab, my high risk tab, the most degen filters that I have, okay? Now, the next filter that I have is slightly different filter that respects what I just showed you. It's called the five minute time frame filter, okay? Now, other than these filters, when you fill out these fields here, what they have is they have this time frame filter. It shows either the last five minutes, last hour, last six hours, or last 24 hours. And what that does is it makes the data on this table only display data from that time frame regardless of the fields that I enter here. So I might be showing coins that are younger than a day old, but if I select the time frame to only show data from the last five minutes, then it's only gonna show the data from the last five minutes for all of those coins that are younger than a day old. Does that make sense? And so the reason I selected five minutes as the time frame to show the data on the table is because I want to see if coins are active right now in order to detect tokens that just started trading but yet show as older than an hour or whatever here in the age tab because that can be misleading. And now one way I can do that is by looking at the five minute, one hour, six hour, and 24 hour percentage change of the price. If all of those are matching and I have a certain amount of buys and a few sells here, then perhaps it's a new token. So let's try and find one that's probably new. This one, 171, 171, all of these are the same, so it's probably a new token. What do you know? It's a new token. But maybe they listed it hours after they created the contract and not six minutes after. 
So while I can tell it's a new token by these percentages all being the same on the time frame, top five minute time frame, I might find out that the token address that looks like it's a brand new token because the percentages are all the same was actually deployed days ago. And so that's how you can spot a new token that just started trading but has a contract address that was older, right? You look at the percentages being the same. I can maybe find another example here. So it's like these are all the same. These are all the same. These are all the same. It's like, for the most part, these are new tokens. Um, yeah, these are not the same. So this is probably not a new token. But if this said 22 hours and these were all the same, then there's a chance that the chart is new and the contract is older than normal, right? So that's a special pro tip for you guys. And it's not a rule. It's not like, oh, just because they took their time to launch means it's not a scam. They can still scam you. Maybe they just took forever to launch. And it also doesn't mean just because they did launch quickly from the time they created the token contract that it's a scam. That doesn't mean that either. It's not like a cut and dry rule. It's just a tip on how this age column works and how to think about it, okay? Now the next filters, I didn't show you the, the, the filters on this page. So basically, sorry, <laughs> I forgot about that part. It's like the most important part. When I do this page for the five minute tokens to detect those old contracts that just launched, I'm ranking by buys in descending order and showing coins that have liquidity greater than $100, but a market cap less than $500,000. And I make sure that it has at least three buys in the last five minutes, and that's what makes this page only 16 coins. It cuts out all of the noise, and I can watch this short page for new coins that list, right? And so if you keep all of these filters open, right? If I open these in different tabs, you can have these different tabs open where I have all of these, you know, hour coins. There's only 16 of them. Now I have all these five minute activity coins that I'll only have 13 coins on this page. So the less coins you have on the page and the better the filter, the easier it is going to do to do your market research because you're just cutting out all that noise. Now, these next tools, they're less degen. Those first uh, filters were very degen meant to find like brand new coins. But this next filter, it's basically for finding middle aged tokens. Okay. So these are tokens that are younger than three days old, but they could also be brand new. But I'm also cutting out a lot of the noise here, even more noise than those other degen filters by making sure that they have at least a certain amount of liquidity. In this case, $10,000 minimum liquidity, but also a minimum market cap or fully diluted value of $100,000, but also a maximum market cap of a million dollars so that there's still some opportunity. And you can change these filters around yourself to basically capture more opportunities in the ways that you want to. So if you want to um, capture coins where it might be as high as $3 million market cap because you see those as new still, then you can select $3 million as your maximum. Those million dollar coins or $3 million coins that could possibly go um, all the way to like $30 million market cap, right? So you don't want to miss out on, on things like that, right? So you, you can include a better filter here. Um, now, I'm also showing coins that have 24-hour buy activity and 24-hour sell activity just to cut out even more noise. And I'm showing one-hour transactions, right? So I want to filter coins that had at least three transactions in the last hour and one of them at least needs to be a buy transaction. And that's just to filter out even more noise. And it's, it's just important to filter out noise, right? So here are the coins. It's only showing 34 coins. It's a pretty neat list here. And consider this just like middle-aged coins, right? So we keep our eye on this. However high of a market cap you want to include as, you know, in your middle-aged coins, just up the maximum market cap that you allow in your filters here. And I filter to show data for the last 24 hours on this one. And the reason I want to show for the last 24 hours is because these are longer time frame coins. So I want to capture all the data for the last 24 hours so I can see all of the activity. And when I sort by volume, that's the default filter. We're sorting by volume in descending order. So it's showing the coins that have the greatest volume on top and the lowest volume on the bottom. And so one way that I treat this page is I go in, I open up a tab for all of these coins. And after I have a tab open for all of the coins, I make a new multi-chart. Okay, 
go to my multi chart and I start charting all of these coins. I copy the contract address and I put it into the multi chart and you do this repeatedly each day for the coins that show up in this middle aged pair filter, right? So there's different ways to use each of these filters. If I were to use the one hour old tokens, I'm using these to just try and snipe new launches. So I'm here trying to look and I'm trying to buy as soon as possible. Here's pretty much the same thing except for the filters meant to capture coins that launch a little bit differently from uh, older contracts, right? So these are basically for the same thing but just to capture different coins. Now this one, I'm doing what I say with the multi chart, right? So all of these coins, they're at, they're younger than three days old. And so what I'm doing is I'm just multi charting them and I'm waiting for a dip, right? These coins, I might just wanna buy immediately. These coins, I multi chart and after I have a bunch of them multi charted, I wait for a dip on one that I think is actually good, right? So there's a process for actually determining whether or not you think something is actually good and that, is a matter of like you know, going to the Telegram, going to the Twitter, seeing if there are influencers participating in the Telegram, seeing if you like the community, seeing if you like the token utility, if there is any, if it's just a meme coin, seeing if you like you know whatever branding the meme coin is, right? And so that's just the gist of seeing if you like a coin. And if you like a coin and it's on a dip and you've multi-charted it off this filter, that means that you've caught a coin that's younger than three days old, that's less than a certain amount of market cap, sufficient to your standards and so you can uh, have a better chance of success by cutting out even more noise there's only 35 tokens on this tab um, pretty pretty clean tab uh, and then the last tab that i'm going to show you this tab right here let's go it's the hot pairs tab so this is the most general tab that i have the most general set of filters and these filters are ranking by volume in descending order, showing coins with liquidity greater than $10,000, market, market cap greater than $100,000, less than $5 million, uh, age at least 72 hours. So think of this like this tab is picking up where the last filter left off, okay? So it's showing coins greater than 72 hours, greater than three days old, whereas the last one is showing coins younger than three days old. So if you set the same max market cap, it's kind of just picking up where the last one left off. And then I got basically some filters to make sure there's minimum amount of buy and sell action and a minimum amount of transactions in the last hour just to cut out a lot of noise. Now this is my most general tab. There's still 33 coins on it, but just consider this the hot pairs tab because it has no maximum age. It's showing all the coins in existence that are less than $5 million in market cap with some other filters to cut out all the noise. So think of it like just the hot pairs tab for anything less than $5 million market cap, right? Because it's sorting by volume. So again, you do the same exact thing for, for these ones, except for these are older tokens, right? A lot of these tokens are gonna be accumulating up here with high activity on this page on the hot pairs tab um, as meme season progresses. Some will join the ranks of this page. And this is where you can pretty much make sure you don't miss the next Pepe if you're super late. Because if you, if you think about the progression, the next Pepe or the next 1000X meme token is gonna to show up on this page first maybe, or maybe it'll show up on this page first. Then it'll show up on this page. You can, it's a middle-aged token. Will you get it here? Or will you get it when it's here, after three days old, when it's on its last you know, phase of being able for you to research it with your filters? And after it leaves that $500 million, or sorry, that $5 million market cap, which is your maximum filter, you can no longer research it with these filters. So. Assuming you're gonna look for the next 1000X meme coin, the next Pepe, you need to find it before it leaves your filters. And in this case, my filters are set for a maximum $5 million market cap. So that's when I, the next Pepe leaves my filters, right? So that's how to do it. That's how to use the filters, um, play around with your own filters. I want you guys to 
basically fill this out yourself come up with your own ideas and leave it as a comment in below and if you want my filters i've included them as a link all four of my filters in the description in the video so if you guys are getting value and you like these filters please like and subscribe and if you aren't following me on twitter go ahead and follow me on twitter at matt tremolata i give you guys some alpha on my twitter and then also i have a discord where we share good plays and so you guys can join my discord here's the chat you can ask me about different coins, you know, got a whole bunch of conversation in here. So, yep, I hope you guys are liking the content. Uh, see you guys in the next video.